Hi folks, welcome to my channel, Walk With Doc. Did you click that video because of that scary photo? Tell you what, that thing is for real. I'm going to go ahead and discuss to you the real deal about diabetes. So let me discuss to you the overview, symptoms, causes, complications and preventions, diagnosis and treatment, and of course the lifestyle and home remedies. Today I'm going to share to you the real deal about diabetes and the naked truth that might revolutionize the treatment of your diabetes. So I recommend for you to finish the whole video and see the home style, home remedies and lifestyle. All information that I'm about to share to you is actually from mayoclinic.org, my personal experience of seeing diabetic patients and relatives, and my buddy here Harrison's principles of internal medicine. According to the IDF or International Diabetes Federation, in 2019, a total of 463 million people are estimated to be living with diabetes, representing 9.3% of a global adult population starting as soon as 20 years old up to 79 years of age. And this number is estimated to increase up to 578 million or 10.2 increase in 2030 and a 10.9 increase or 700 million cases in 2045. Diabetes mellitus refers to a group of diseases that affect how your body uses blood sugar, of which a common notion for far too many that sugar only comes from sweets like chocolates, donuts, cakes and pastries. However, sugar comes from all sorts of food and once sugar breaks down to a basic molecule known as glucose, it becomes vital to your health because glucose is an important source of energy for the cells that make up the muscles and tissues. And it's also the brain's main source of fuel and other vital organs in the body. I believe it's also very important for you to know the role of glucose in the body. Glucose is a basic molecule of sugar that is a good source of energy for the cells that make up the muscles and other tissues in the body. And it comes from two major sources, the food that we eat and the liver that stores up glucose in a form of glycogen. Sugar is basically absorbed into the bloodstream where it enters the cells with the help of insulin. And the liver stores and makes glucose. So whenever your glucose levels are low and you haven't eaten in a while, the liver breaks down the stored glycogen into glucose in order to keep your glucose level in the blood within normal range. The underlying cause of diabetes varies by type. And no matter what type of diabetes you have, it's an excess sugar in your blood. Too much sugar in your blood may lead to a serious health problems. Chronic conditions or chronic diabetes conditions have two types, type 1 and type 2 diabetes. Now, when your blood sugar levels are higher than normal, but not high enough to be classified as diabetes, this condition is known as a pre-diabetes, which is often the precursor of a full-blown diabetes. And there are cases of diabetes which occur during pregnancy, it's known as gestational diabetes but it may resolve after the baby is delivered. However, if left untreated, it may lead into diabetes in women. Now when it comes to symptoms, diabetes may vary depending on how much blood sugar is elevated. And no matter what type of diabetes that you may have, these are the noticeable and normal condition of some of the signs and symptoms that you might want to check them out. Some of the signs and symptoms of type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes are increased thirst, frequent urination, extreme hunger, unexplained weight loss, fatigue, irritability, blurred vision, slow healing sores, frequent infections such as gums or skin infections, and vaginal infections. Insulin is a hormone that comes from a gland situated behind and below the stomach. The pancreas secretes insulin into the bloodstream, enabling the sugar to enter the cells. Insulin lowers the amount of sugar in your bloodstream as blood sugar levels drops, so does the secretion of insulin from your pancreas. And yet, there's a lot of misconceptions about diabetes. So let's clear out what's facts and what's fiction. If you eat a lot of sweets, you may develop diabetes. That's a fiction because the body takes up sugar from all sorts of food up to the basic molecule known as glucose. So in a normal condition, when you have a high blood sugar level after a meal, it'll go back to its normal level from two to four hours period of time. If you have diabetes, you can still eat the foods that you love. This one is absolutely fact. 
Just like anyone else, people with diabetes should consume a variety of fruits and veggies, proteins, whole grains, and healthy fats. The key is to limit the food that are high in carbohydrates, and as long as the amount of these high carbohydrate foods are kept in check, no foods are completely off limits, and yes, that includes sweets. If you are overweight, you will eventually develop the disease. That is fiction. Being overweight certainly puts you at risk for developing diabetes, but it's not a guarantee that you will develop the disease. Diabetes can affect people of all shapes and sizes, and there are many factors that increase your chance of developing diabetes, such as race, age, family history, physical inactivity, high blood pressure, and diet. But if it's managed properly with an appropriate nutritious diet and exercise, you're on your way to the road of a healthier life in no time. Not all people with diabetes have to take insulin. That is a fact. People with type 1 diabetes do require insulin, since the pancreas releases insulin little to none. However, type 2 diabetes can be managed solely through proper diet, exercise, and some may require medications that you might want to consult to your doctor. And with a recent study and scientific breakthrough, intermittent fasting can reverse your diabetes type 2 without the aid of insulin. So, you might be able to say goodbye to the needle if you work closely with your doctor to regularly and carefully monitor your carbohydrate intake and maintain a stable blood sugar levels. Causes of type 1 diabetes. The exact cause of type 1 diabetes is unknown. What is known is that your immune system, which normally fights harmful bacteria or viruses, attacks and destroys your insulin producing cells in the pancreas. This leaves you with little or no insulin at all. Instead of being transported into your cells, sugar builds up in your bloodstream. Type 1 diabetes is thought to be caused by a combination of genetic susceptibility and environmental factors. Though exactly what those factors are, it's still unclear. Hmm. Weight is not believed to be a factor in type 1 diabetes. Factors for diabetes depend on the type of diabetes. Although the cause for type 1 diabetes is unknown, Factors that signal an increased risk may include Family history Your risk increases if your parent or sibling has type 1 diabetes Environmental factors Circumstances such as exposure to a viral illness likely play some role in type 1 diabetes The presence of damaging immune system cells are also known as autoantibodies Sometimes family members of people with type 1 diabetes are tested with the presence of diabetes autoantibodies. If you have these autoantibodies, you have an increased risk of developing type 1 diabetes. But not everyone who has these autoantibodies develops diabetes. Geography. Certain countries such as Finland, Sweden, have higher rates of type 1 diabetes. Causes of prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. In these type of diabetes, your cells become resistant to the action of insulin. Hence, pancreas is unable to make enough insulin to overcome this resistance. Instead of the sugar moving into your cells, where it's needed for energy, sugar builds up into your bloodstream. Exactly why it happens is uncertain, though it's believed that genetic and environmental factors also play a role in the development of diabetes type 2. Being overweight is also strongly linked to the development of type 2 diabetes. But not everyone in type 2 diabetes is overweight. As I mentioned previously, diabetes affect people of all shapes and sizes. Risk factors for pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Researchers don't fully understand why some people develop pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes and others don't. However, it's clear that certain factors increase the risk, including weight. The more fatty tissue you have, the more resistant your cells become to insulin. Inactivity. The less active you are, the greater your risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Because physical activity helps you control your weight and uses up your glucose as energy, and makes your cells more sensitive to insulin. Family history. Your risk increases if your parent or sibling has type 2 diabetes. Race or ethnicity. Although it's unclear why certain people, including like Black, Hispanic, American Indian, and Asian American people are at higher risk. Polycystic ovary syndrome. 
For women having polycystic ovary syndrome, a common condition characterized by irregular menstrual periods, excess hair growth, and obesity increases the risk of diabetes. High blood pressure. Having high blood pressure of 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury is linked to an increased risk of type 2 diabetes. Abnormal cholesterol and triglyceride levels. If you have low levels of high density lipoprotein, or known as a good cholesterol, or HDL, your risk for type 2 diabetes is higher. Triglycerides are another type of fat carried in the blood. People with high levels of triglycerides have an increased risk of type 2 diabetes. Your doctor can let you know what cholesterol or triglyceride levels are. Age. Your risk increases when you get older. This may be because you tend to exercise less, lose muscle mass, and gain weight as you age. Causes of gestational diabetes. The causes of gestational diabetes is hormonal in origin. During pregnancy or gestation, the placenta produces hormones that sustain the pregnancy itself. However, these hormones are the ones that make up the cells more resistant to insulin. Normally, your pancreas responds by producing enough extra insulin to overcome this resistance. But sometimes, your pancreas can't keep up. When this happens, too little glucose gets into your cells and too much stays in your blood, resulting in gestational diabetes. Risk factors for gestational diabetes. Pregnant women can develop gestational diabetes. Some women are at greater risk than the others. And here are the risk factors for gestational diabetes. Age. Women older than 25 are at increased risk. Family or personal history. Your risk increases if you have pre-diabetes. Or if a close family member, such as a parent or a sibling, has type 2 diabetes. You're also at greater risk if you have a gestational diabetes during your previous pregnancy or if you had an unexplained stillbirth. Weight. Being overweight before pregnancy increases your risk. Complications. Long-term complications of diabetes develop gradually. However, the longer you have the diabetes and the less controlled your blood sugar level is, the higher the risk of complications. Eventually, the diabetes complications can be disabling or life-threatening. So please watch this. So, for you to know how to prevent those complications of diabetes, I'm going to share to you the prevention, diagnosis and treatment, and most importantly, lifestyle and home remedies with scientific research and discoveries that might revolutionize the treatment of your diabetes. So please, like, share and subscribe, and don't forget to hit that notification bell for you to watch the next video. Leave your comments below.